It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello, yes, it's Chloe here with another episode of the e-commerce master plan podcast. This episode is the last one of our 2020 e-commerce master plan growth series sponsored by Omnisend. Can you believe it's all live? We've got to the end of January. And it's a very special type of show that I know you all love to listen to. This is an experts episode, an episode where I invite some of my awesome e-commerce friends to answer a question. Earlier in the series, we covered what is the most important thing we learned in e-commerce in 2019. And in this episode, they're answering one that looks to the future. They're answering what is your top tip for growing an e-commerce business in 2020? Now, we have a wide range of answers coming up for you, even wider than we did in the first show. I don't think anyone's given anything like the same answer this time. So you are going to be getting some great advice. Certainly, at least one of these is going to be relevant for your business, if not many more. So enjoy. But before we get into that, let's hear from our sponsors. Omnisend, the marketing automation platform tailored for e-commerce. Omnisend provides sophisticated omnichannel marketing automation tools for sales-driven marketers that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, Facebook Messenger and retargeting ads on Facebook and Google, all from just one platform. Try Omnisend for free for 14 days. Just visit omnisend.com forward slash master plan and get started. This is probably my favourite Amazon review so far for my new book, e-commerce marketing, how to get traffic that buys to your website. I finally decided to take the Friday off and read a book, this book. I have now read it once and will use it many times in the following weeks. A great reference and I'm full of ideas. Can't wait to get back to work next week. Thank you, Mr. K. Heller. If you want to do the same as Mr. K. Heller, you can grab the Kindle or paperback on your local Amazon store now. Or if you're not quite ready to commit to buying the book, head to ecommercemarketingbook.com to get the free crash course, including the first two chapters. However 2019 was for you, 2020 is a new year and one where if you can find the way to adapt to the retail market around you, find a way to drive your traffic, sales and profits forward, then you'll find it is a lot better than 2019. I know that that is easier said than done and that it can take a lot of testing to find the right new opportunity. But if you don't try to find it, then you certainly aren't going to. These top tips will hopefully make working out what to test or focus on this year just a little bit easier. Let's start in with the big picture view and kind of where we left off in the first expert show a few weeks ago. Here's Ritis Loris from Omnisend to kick us off. Yeah, so I would see that they're going to be like uh, three major trends in 2020, which uh, which I would see. So first is really con- consolidation of traditional retailers. So uh, Amazon, Walmart, they're gonna gonna get stronger. At the same time, they're gonna be a more and more space for like D2C brands. And the, we see this trend. We saw this trend already in 2019, and it's gonna just strengthen as um, a lot of strong old school companies will be uh, selling more and more online directly to consumers, and a lot of like independent players will will a race and will survive as what not was not maybe the case in in previous uh, years in the past so really uh, this is a good news for uh, entrepreneurs who are just willing to launch their online businesses and uh, uh, considering that so really people will be buying and will have more personal relationship with um, with their brands and out of that it's coming the second trend which is which is very good and very important so um you know owned media and owned media will become more and more important as it was important all the times but basically now what has happened the acquisition acquisition channels are being dominated by facebook google and amazon as a third largest player even even outside their marketplace but as a as a acquisition a customer acquisition channel so 
and the digital ad spends uh, grow a lot. And uh, those independent brands, they, they sometimes find it challenging to, to really uh, be able to compete with, uh, with the largest, largest players in the market. So fearful owned media, which is mainly subscriber lists, uh, will become more and more important. So this is actually uh, the value you have. And I would say transforming your understanding about your what your subscriber is, that this is an asset, this is a value, you should be growing this list constantly, you should be cleaning it up, you should be uh, really following the best practices of a GDPR or California Consumer Privacy Act, which uh, which is just, you know, came came into power by, by came effective by the very beginning of 2020. So those make an impact, but at the same time, having good quality lists and really uh, having this personal communication with uh, a people, with your customers is very important. And the importance will grow and the opportunities which this direct communication create uh, will, will be higher as well, will be better. So, and the third trend, which is really following this one is, um, um, I mean, I'm a strong believer in omnichannel in general. So, and we see this trend, and, and as a company and myself, we see it as a trend. So, really uh, changing, um, uh, like changing understanding of what your subscriber is. So, up until now, once we talk subscriber, uh, we think about email first. So, subscriber is really the one who gave you permission to communicate via various channels, email text messages, Facebook Messenger messages, WhatsApp, maybe web push notifications. So all of those people who gave you a consent and permission to communicate with them, they are your subscribers. And this is a value. This is the, the asset the company, direct-to-consumer company has and should should really value it. So um, I would say, yeah, changing, changing concept of what subscriber is and SMS as a channel will definitely continue growing as it has proved already that this is very efficient, uh, very customers are liking it, and then the uh, you know it just it was just the beginning in the previous year, and this year it's definitely gonna gonna grow the usage and the effectiveness uh, will remain the same. So I believe SMS will be used more and more, and um, and yeah, following that integration uh, of different communication channels uh, definitely will become more and more important and. I remember uh, ourselves launching like omni-channel approach and launching different channels. I mean, OmniSend launching this uh, like two years ago, we were kind of pioneers in that. Uh, currently, uh, every marketing automation tool uh, is going to omni-channel. And like all our competitors, they, they do have different channels, uh, combining different channels, but that's definitely what sets the trend and what showed the trends because uh, customers are willing to have all in one place. Wow, a bumper answer there. Rita's always gives such good advice. Now, Rita's ended by talking about the power of omnichannel marketing, which I know often leads people to say, but how do I know what's working? Well, let's turn to Ian Hammersley from Smart eBusiness for a little guidance on that as he talks about revenue per visitor. So 2020 is is almost, it's 2019, but even worse in some respect, because we're going into it with a reduced marketing spend. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure on the margin and no one is dramatically increasing their marketing spend. If anything's happening, we're, we're reducing it. So, so the only way to still grow in 2020 with a, a, a reducing marketing spend is to look at the KPIs and the actual numbers. So what will happen is if you don't look at the metrics of the site and improve them, you'll hit a glass ceiling. You just won't be able to grow. Um, and the e-commerce businesses that will still grow in 2020, and there's a lot of growth there, will be the ones that actually focus on the KPIs. So if you're spending Ten thousand pounds a month, and all of a sudden you've got to spend seven thousand seven seven thousand pounds a month. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that you still can't grow more in revenue. So, if you can increase the revenue per visitor by twenty five percent, you're able then to to get more revenue out of the same marketing spend. Um, if that makes sense, because you can increase your out to basket stats. You can increase your basket to order stat, which will increase your conversion rate. 
And if you can, and, and things like the average order value um, have a dramatic effect. And you will win the race if you can get your average order value up from 50 pounds to 60 pounds, and your competitor has still got an average order value of 50 pounds. We will win it because you can then spend more to acquire that customer and still be profitable. If you want to know more about that, then take a listen to the interview I did with Ian last year, episode 229, or he has a free video all about it. And we've linked to both of those in the show notes for you. So you can get all that at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast. Okay, let's stick with marketing and hear from Parkfield's Ria Fischina. So the top tip for 2020 is um, to remind everybody that clarity and simplicity will win over complexity every time. And the best way that you're going to be able to do that is to capture the intent of your users before um, you know they can ask the questions that they need to. And the best way you're going to do that is by using the tools that are available, you know, using um, the AI to grow your recommended products and give intelligent upsells and things like that. Um, users are, you know, slammed with so many choices and they really just want to go to brands that know them right off the bat. Um, so the better you are at that, the better you'll do next year. A woman after my own heart. Um, so keep it clear and simple and don't get too complicated. And let's get straight on with some more great marketing advice. From a different angle this time, here's Lucy Bloomfield of 10,000 Customers. For me, it's definitely storytelling and I keep coming back to it. I know I spoke about it a bit on the episode that I was on on your podcast. Um, but the reason I keep coming back to it is because I've seen it transform businesses in so many different situations. So for example, in really great situations in businesses that have already been doing really well, storytelling can be the thing that takes it from, you know, 40 grand a month to a hundred grand a month with the right paid advertising strategy. And it's also the thing that I've seen save a business from bankruptcy in over a weekend like generating tens of thousands of dollars of cash and skating them through to the next bit. And when I talk about storytelling, what I'm really talking about is again, radical transparency as a strategy, um, to collect sales. And I really think that the businesses that implement this on both an organic side of things and a paid advertising side of things have more chance of being successful in 2020 than any other business. If you want to hear more about Lucy's approach to fast growth e-commerce whilst thinking about the planet, and that's not a contradiction, I assure you, then make sure you check out my recent interview with her. That's episode 253. So we've talked marketing, stats, the big trends we can capitalise on. Let's go international. I think if international isn't part of your e-commerce 2020 growth strategy, then it should be. Uh, global e-commerce is no longer novel, uh, it's essential. Um, and it's getting easier, I think. Um, so yeah, international markets are growing at a crazy pace. Uh, I saw a study the other day uh, by Forrester that said a fifth of all worldwide e-commerce will be cross-border by 2022. And I can believe that. And I think if you're a growing brand, um, it's a really good time to expand that way because, like I say, it's getting easier. Um, might seem a bit daunting, but there's a lot of tech out there that makes it easy. So payments, uh, most payment providers now are making it really easy to go multi-currency. Um, some of them just let you switch it on and other ones, okay, there's a bit more of a barrier, but it's certainly way easier than it used to be. Um, tax and dealing with the complexities there. Again, most e-commerce platforms now will build in the, the basics there at least. Um, shipping. Uh, I feel like every year 3PLs and the tech behind that industry leaps forward and makes it easier. And really, I think you'll get left behind if you're not selling internationally. So I think any promising brand that is looking for ways to grow um, should look to international. 
That was Alex O'Byrne from We Make Websites. Now, he may sound like a northerner, but uh, he's now a New Yorker. And he's reminding us all to look beyond our own borders. Before we hear from our last two experts, let's hear from our sponsors. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Omnisend, the marketing automation platform tailored for e-commerce. Omnisend provides sophisticated omnichannel marketing automation tools for sales-driven marketers that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, Facebook Messenger and retargeting ads on Facebook and Google, all from just one platform. Try Omnisend for free for 14 days. Just visit omnisend.com forward slash master plan and get started. In the last ad break, you heard a review from a retailer just like you of my new book, E-commerce Marketing, How to Get Traffic That Buys to Your Website. It's a Kindle bestseller in the UK, USA and Australia. And as past podcast guest Chantal put it, if you run an e-commerce business, buy this book. The Kindle and paperback are available from your local Amazon store, plus it's now available everywhere on audiobook too. Just search e-commerce marketing on your favourite audiobook app and click on the white cover with the blue and pink text. It's time for the top tips round. In the first of our annual experts podcasts, episode 251, we heard a lot about the need to be on top of the technology and delivering a customer experience that leads to sales. Rachel Jacobs from e-commerce partnership has a great take on how to make that a reality and use it as a way to create your growth in 2020. The biggest tip really for me for 2020, it's not necessarily anything that's very new. Um, However, I think in light of the Uh, findings from particularly over Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the huge shift towards mobile um, and the massive, uh, the 50-50 split between online and offline um, purchases. The big tip for me for 2020 is the fact that agencies need to be more proactive with their brands. Um, For those who don't know, I work as an agency advisor. I work with e-commerce agencies across Europe and across the world. And um, for me, brands should expect that their agencies are more proactive when it comes to making recommendations. It's on the agencies to look at all these findings from Black Friday uh, or from 2019 and Uh, make data-driven recommendations that will ensure that brands are getting the the best bang for their buck, so to speak, Um, optimizing that customer experience and more than optimizing it, personalizing it according to buyer behavior um, with particular focus on on, uh, mobile checkouts. Um, You know, the data showed that in in Black Friday, on Black Friday 2019, $900 million was spent through uh, Shopify stores and 69% of that was uh, through mobile. So brands need to pay particular attention to their mobile experience with their customers and also making sure if you are in store and online that you're syncing up those processes and it's ready for the brands to push back and expect that of their agencies and, and be proactive and ask their agencies, what are your recommendations? What are your findings from last year? And how are you going to use what you've learned with all the brands you've worked with and put that into my strategy and my growth for the year ahead? And if you want to know a bit more about those stats she mentioned, then check out her answer in episode 251. Okay, our last expert top tip on how to grow an e-commerce business in 2020. And we're finishing at the end of the customer journey. Here's Chris Dawson from Tame Bay. My top tip for 2020 has got to be delight the consumer with the delivery experience. And if you look at what happens when you buy something on Amazon, as soon as you buy it, Amazon fire interaction with a whole load of tracking events. They'll tell you, thank you for your order. Your order's been shipped. Your order will be delivered today. Your order's 15 minutes away. Your order's two drops away. And you know along the line everything that's happening with your order. But too many retailers rely on the courier's tracking site. They will, when I buy something, they'll just say, here's a tracking link for my Hermes, or here's a Royal Mail tracking number, or here's a Yodel tracking number. And it's time that online retailers, especially those with their own website, grasp the whole tracking experience and have an integrated tracking 
page on their website. And basically, as a consumer, once I've bought from you, don't send me to a courier site, send me back to your site. And then at the same time, while you're delivering an item, you can start getting creative with, your item was delivered at 3.15 today, here's a 10% off voucher if you'd like to buy an accessory. Or your new Blu-ray was delivered today, the player was delivered today, would you like a voucher for some DVDs to go with your new Blu-ray player? But you can only do that if you've got the tracking on your own website. And more importantly, the consumer is going to be a lot more loyal to you and likely to shop with you again if they go to your website for the tracking rather than why would you send them off to DPD? They don't care about DPD. They bought from you. Keep them on your website. And if you've not got it yet, get an integrated tracking page as a, a, a first step and then think about ways you can use that integrated tracking page for remarketing to your customers who are going to come to that page to find when the delivery is going to arrive. After listening to all that great advice, how could you fail to grow in 2020? Well, if all you do is listen, then you probably will. So you've got to take some action. And to help you take action, we've summarised each tip and included links to all the guests and any tools they've mentioned in the show notes. And you can get those by heading to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast, where you will find a link to this show. I hope you've enjoyed this interview from our 2020 e-commerce master plan growth series sponsored by Omnisend. This is the final episode in the series. So for the first time, I can say right now you can go and check out all the other eight. Yes, they're all available for you right now, even if you're listening to this on the day it goes live. So go on, treat yourself to a podcast binge. Have a great week and keep optimising. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast.